Hello, my name is Adam Dillman. In this webinar, we will cover making custom panels, particularly for microsatellite and SSR analysis, AFLP analysis, and all other custom chemistries. This is a specialized topic in GeneMarker. If you are not yet familiar with GeneMarker, I recommend that you first watch the GeneMarker introductory webinar before watching this video. Genotyping panels for most common kits and chemistries are easily obtained. In fact, many of them are installed with GeneMarker. However, no such panels exist for custom chemistries and specialized probe mixes, requiring the user to create their own. The panel editor in GeneMarker facilitates this process. The workflow of creating a panel is displayed here. First, raw data is imported and then run using the run wizard without a panel. Then a new panel is created using the panel editor tool and then data is rerun with the newly created panel. From here, genotyping and post-genotyping applications can take place. I will now demonstrate the process of creating a custom panel. To begin, simply import your traces. Go to File, Open Data, click Add and then navigate to your samples. Select your traces and then click Open and OK. We can now see that I've successfully imported the raw data. I'd like to point out specifically that this is microsatellite dinucleotide data. However, I want to emphasize that the methods that we're going to cover in this webinar for creating custom panels apply to all analysis types and all data types. Now go to the Run Wizard by either clicking on this green arrow or by going to Project Run. Because I haven't yet made a panel for this data set, in the Panel field, I'll select None. The size standard I know was HD400, and I can clearly see from the raw data that the standard color is red. Finally, I know that my analysis type was Animal Fragment. As is usually the case, the default settings of the Run Wizard are appropriate for this analysis, and because of that, I can simply click Next, Next, and OK. We can see from the green icons on the left that size calling was successful. However, as we might expect, there is no allele call information because we didn't upload a panel. To begin the process of creating our panel, go to the Panel Editor, which is under Tools, Panel Editor. I'd like to first just give you a general overview of the Panel Editor. We can see that panels already saved in the Panel Directory are listed here in this column in the upper left. Below it are listed all of our sample files that we uploaded, and in the center is the trace electropharogram. You can see that the bins of whichever panel I have selected are superimposed over the trace electropharogram. Finally, more detailed allele information and panel information is shown down here below in this table. You can sort through different dye colors by clicking this dye color icon, and you can switch through viewing modes by clicking on this trace mode icon. Right now we're seeing the max and average, but we can switch to trace overlay to see all traces simultaneously, and this is the recommended viewing option for making panels. To make a new panel, just go to File, Create New Panel. Enter a name, in this case I'll choose New Panel as my name. Choose the data type, and then choose the creation method. We can see that there are two main methods here, manual and automatic. First, I'm going to show you manual. Manual panel creation is essentially exactly what it sounds like. Alleles and markers are individually added by hand. To insert an allele, just right-click and then select Insert Allele. You can give the allele a name, its size, the bin width, the accompanying marker name, or enter any comments. When you've entered in these fields, just click OK. Now we can see that the allele has been successfully added. The allele can be edited just like in the main analysis window by right clicking on it. Also the allele can be shifted to the left or right and to do this you simply hold the shift key which will highlight the panel name, left click on the allele, and then drag the mouse to the left or right all while holding the shift key and the left mouse key. And when you have the allele where you'd like it, just release shift and the left mouse key. I'm a little bit off center, so I'm going to shift it a little bit more. 
I'd also like to mention that the marker name, which in this case is no name because I didn't input a name, is above the trace, and the allele name is below the trace. Entire markers can also be added in essentially the same way. To do this, I'll go to a different dye color. To add a marker, first highlight the region of the marker over the trace. And to do this, you hold Control, which will also turn the panel name red, and then left click and drag the mouse over the area that you'd like to highlight. When you've made your selection, just release the Control key and the mouse key. Now, right click on the highlighted area and select Create Marker. Again, there are numerous options for modifying the marker. You can input a marker name, but more importantly, you can select the nucleotide repeat pattern. And this is the pattern of nucleotide repeats that you expect within the marker. In this case, I know that my data is microsatellite dinucleotide data, so I will set by manual and input 2. Finally, if you like, you can change the bin width and select or deselect the auto label feature. Now we can see that the marker was successfully added, and more specifically, we can see that the alleles were added in intervals of 2 meaning that the program successfully identified the correct nucleotide repeat type. Another useful feature is that entire markers can be shifted left or right, like the alleles. And to do that, just hold shift, left click on the marker name, and then drag left or right while holding shift and the mouse key. And when you have the marker where you like it, simply release shift and the mouse key to place the marker. Markers can also be edited at any time by simply right clicking on the marker name. I'm now going to delete this panel and recreate it using the automatic create option. I'll rename it new panel. I have automatically create selected and I will use all samples. And now we can see that the program has automatically added markers and alleles to each major peak cluster. With automatic panel creation and manual panel creation, it's always a good idea to go back into each specific marker and edit out alleles that you don't want and edit in specific alleles that you do want. I've continued this editing process and you can now see the full result. I've deleted some alleles and markers and I've added some new alleles as well. You can see that I've also renamed my markers so that they now show the correct names. And I'll just remind you that this can simply be done by right-clicking on the marker and editing the marker. Whether you choose to create your panels using the automatic or manual method is ultimately up to you. Just be sure to always go in and edit your panels and markers for accuracy. Now that I've created this panel, I can run my data with it. First, I'll save the panel and if necessary, you can export it as well. Now I'll return to the Run Wizard, and for my panel, I will select this newly created panel. Then I'll click Next, Next, and OK. Apply changes to all. And now I have successful size and allele calls, and I'm ready to proceed to post genotyping applications. Thank you for watching this GeneMarker webinar. In this webinar, we covered custom panel creation for microsatellite and SSR analysis, AFLP analysis, and all other custom chemistries. Additional information about the panel editor can be found in Chapter 5 of the User Manual. For more information, or for a free 30-day trial of GeneMarker and other soft genetics products, please visit softgenetics.com or email info at softgenetics.com. For technical support questions, please write to tech underscore support at softgenetics.com. Thank you for watching.